The Mysterious Disappearance of the Roanoke Colonists Sir Walter Riley, in 1585, with permission from Queen Elizabeth, set out across the Atlantic to establish a new colony. The first attempt was far from successful. The settlers were facing starvation, were raiding the natives' camps, and those that didn't starve simply left. In 1587, there was another attempt to colonize. The second group composed of 94 colonists, 17 women, and 9 children. This group was led by John White. Though the second group faced similar hardships, there was a determination to make the colony successful. John White ended up taking a ship back to England to get stuff. Detoured by an ongoing war in Europe, it took White three years to return to the colony, only to find it abandoned. White, whose family had been at Roanoke, investigated to try and find out what had happened to the settlers. There were too few clues to accurately and without a doubt determine what happened. Our problem is we don't know where they went because we do not have enough evidence to corroborate the report from the Jamestown settlement. But there are currently two major theories. Theory number one. The colonists were killed by the Virginian Algonquins. John Smith, famous explorer and one of the most adventurous colonists, went in search of the missing colonists. This was an act led more by self-preservation rather than curiosity. The colony of Jamestown was relatively close to Roanoke. There was fear that whatever killed the settlers would befall upon Jamestown. In 1609, Smith reported that the local tribe of Indians led by their chief, Powhatan, claimed that they massacred the citizens of Roanoke, going so far as to show Smith a musket barrel, a brass mortar, and certain pieces of iron that had once belonged to the settlers. This is a believable theory, but it is also one that the English, at the time, had trouble accepting. This was because it had been almost ten years when they were told of the mass murder. If it had been true, they thought they would have known sooner. Theory number two. Assimilation with the natives at Croatone Island. This is one of the more pleasant theories. It is recorded that when White returned to Roanoke, they found the letters C-R-O carved into a tree. Another carving was discovered with the completed word Croatone. This led John White to believe that they had joined the natives at their location on Croatone Island. White attempted to travel to Croatone Island, but his first efforts were impeded by weather. A second ship was made available, but the captain of the ship refused to take him once the weather had cleared, most likely because he feared the natives. Together, the theories create the best scenario. Some of the colonists were killed by natives. This could be supported by a mass grave found near what was once Roanoke Colony, and the fact that Poetan admitted it. And some assimilated with the natives at Croatone. The island was small, and supporting all 100 settlers would not have been possible. Half the settlers would have been manageable. This theory is also heavily supported because the descendants of the Croatone natives were a mix of Native Americans and the English, some even having Christian values and traditions. Even today, the mystery draws the attention of historians around the country. An entire group of people vanished. Vague traces left of their true fate. Were they killed? Where did they go? And why did they not seek out other Englishmen? While we may never know their true fate, we can still speculate as to what happened, as was done once their disappearance was first discovered. But I took great joy in that I had found a token of their being safe at Croatoan, the place where the savages of the land were our friends.